Cherokee purple is just one of the most unlikeliest occurrences that's happened to me in my life. And uh, to have one of your amazing stories of your life to be around a tomato is, is just remarkable. So one day I was sitting there in Pennsylvania, the mail came in. And at the time I was getting envelopes from quite a few people who were sending me seeds. And a Russian came to me that way, Lillian's yellow. And then this uh, kind of a smaller envelope came from a place called Sevierville, Tennessee. And this man, John D. Green, he called himself J.D. In that packet was this handwritten letter, and it was very simple. It essentially said, here's a purple tomato that the Cherokee Indians gave to my neighbors over 100 years ago. I would like to share it with you. I think it's a great tomato. Tomato's not named. Um, and here's this packet with maybe 10 or 15 seeds. So, well, the first thing a gardener does is go, well, this is pretty amazing. Uh, it's probably gonna be a pink tomato, not purple. It'll probably be really good, but it's a family heirloom. It doesn't have a name yet. Me and JD may be the only two people that have this tomato. So I feel really it's incumbent for me to grow this. So start the seeds, grow the tomato. It starts ripening and it's ripening to a color I have never seen before. It's ripening to a color almost no gardener had ever seen before because this is before the whole black tomato craze. We harvest it, take it in the house, slice it. We thought it was beautiful. It was delicious. So I'm like, okay, we got a tomato, it's purple. We need a name, um, not a real genius approach of a name, but I called it Cherokee Purple based on the fact that it came from the Cherokee Indians and it was purple. And I thought, need to share this. First, I need to save it and send, save lots of seed and share it through the Seed Savers Exchange. Then I need to find a seed company, one of my friends that may evaluate this fairly and maybe offer it. So I called, I sent it to my friend, Jeff McCormick. I said, if I get a tomato for you, he owned a Southern Exposure Seed Exchange at the time. He grew it. We had a little phone call the next year. You know, Craig, that's a mighty fine tasting tomato, but oh, it, it's kind of ugly. It kind of looks like a bruised leg. I'm not sure it's going to be socially accepted, but I tell you what, I think enough of the flavor so that we're going to carry it in our catalog. And so here we are, that was 1991, we're in 2017. I can probably walk into any farmer's market in the country in the summertime and see a tomato being sold that I named. So I think, yeah, I think Jeff, my friend, Mr. Jeff McCormick, I think it's caught on a little bit. And it's, it's a very gratifying, it's, it's gratifying and humbling because in a time where we feel like, how do we make a difference? The world is huge, all the social networking, the simple act of being sent something, of naming a tomato, of sending it to the right person, makes this whole six degree of separation phenomenon come alive. Where the flip side of this is if any one of those chains were broken, the family didn't pass it on to Mr. Green, who didn't pass it on to me, who didn't pass it on to Jeff, who didn't offer it in his catalog, and then somebody didn't buy it from his catalog, maybe a chef that thought, man, this is a great tomato. But it's worked out. And, uh, uh, I'll always have a real warm spot in my heart for Mr. Green for sending me the tomato. It reinforced that I think one of my needs to be on this earth perhaps is to be a tomato ambassador. People have figured out that if they send me their tomatoes, they will get distributed and that means hopefully they will be around forever. And I just feel just so pleased to be able to pay a part, play a part in a really interesting little story.